goal setting. Whether it's for a new year, new me type of resolution, or just something that we want to improve at, I think we all have some goals and skills that we want to get better at and that we want to achieve this year. Unfortunately, many of us end up setting the wrong types of goals, and we end up just completely giving up on them or failing them miserably. In this video, I'll cover what I learned in my own goal setting this year and how it changed how I set my goals going forward. The best part is, scuba diving can actually help you achieve your life goals as well and I'll show you how a little bit later in this video. Sounds good? Well, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and as I was going through and making my list for the new year of, of different goals that I wanted to achieve this year, I also took some time to reflect on what I had last year and you know what I was and wasn't able to achieve. When I took a look at the goal list and especially the items I didn't achieve, I realized I was focusing on the wrong sort of thing for my goal. Many of us set goals based on some sort of milestone that's kind of like the end state that we want to be in, whether that's a certain number on the scale if we're trying to lose weight, or maybe a certain number of dives logged in our logbook. Uh, you know, we just have these different metrics that we set that's really kind of an arbitrary number or, you know, a, a milestone that we can set as a yes, I did do this or no, mm -hmm. I didn't achieve that goal just yet. However, as I did this reflection, I realized for the goals that I was actually able to achieve, I didn't just focus on the outcome, but I actually focused on the actions as my goal instead. And that's what I've learned to do for my new goals going forward into the new year. Doing this not only led me to a great list of resolutions and ideas that you can use for yourself if you're trying to make your own goal list this year, but they also led me to things that I realized are gonna help me achieve my life goals as well, not just my scuba diving goals. To start with, let's go and look at what I mean by some of these action-based goals rather than the milestone goals. And to explain it, I'll start with a story that we can probably all relate to. Imagine it's the new year and you wanna lose a little bit of weight so you can get that beach body back or just be healthier overall. Now, many of us will sign up for a gym and then go ahead and list our goal for the year as you know losing a certain amount of weight by the summertime or a certain amount of weight by the end of the year so we can have this kind of goal weight in mind, right? However, if you're anything like me and probably most people out there, setting this type of goal is a surefire way to probably not actually achieve that goal because you're just focused on the end goal itself and not what's actually going to get you there. So what I found personally is in this situation, instead of setting a goal of just wanting to lose weight by a certain time frame, we should instead say things that are goals based on the actions that'll allow us to get there. So instead of just losing weight, we instead set a goal that's like, I want to make sure I go to the gym three times a week or every day of the week, five days a week, whatever that is. Uh, or maybe I wanna make sure I meal prep my lunch for five days of the week or all seven days of the week. Or maybe I wanna meal prep every meal of every week for the first six months, right? It's more of the actions that are gonna lead us to the result and we'll wind up achieving that original goal that we had anyway. But tracking the goal as saying, did I actually perform the habit is a surefire way to keep your mental health up, keep yourself positive, and allow you to build more of positive habits that allow you to achieve your goals in a long term, rather than just hitting some arbitrary milestone that uh, you know you don't really have a goal of actually performing the stuff to get there. You just have a goal of hitting it without really a plan or action plan to get you there. Now that's probably relatable to a lot of people, but how does that actually apply to diving? Well, with scuba diving, a lot of us set various goals based off of things like maybe I want to hit a certain number of log dives in my logbook. I want to hit my 100 dive, for example, or I want to improve my air consumption underwater and be able to stay down on a tank longer. Uh, I want to improve my buoyancy, you know, different examples like this that are really more of that end goal or that end state that we want to have. Now, I think these are all great goals to have in the sense of having some type of milestone to aim for or like a target that you want to aim for, but I don't think that they're the best way to actually achieve those goals or those outcomes. And for me personally, I learned that I need to change my goal, not just from that end state or milestone, but again, to the actual actions that are gonna let me achieve that eventual state that I want to get to. For example, if I wanna improve my buoyancy, then I don't just set a goal of improve my buoyancy, I set a goal of saying at least once every month, I'm gonna spend an entire dive focused entirely on my buoyancy. I'm gonna spend an entire tank fully working on buoyancy. That's gonna be breathing, hovering, you know, all the different steps I, I won't actually put into my goal plan. That's more of like an action plan for that week or for that month or whatever it's going to be. But just knowing that my goal is every month, I'm gonna make sure I spend at least one tank. So at least, you know, a full hour uh, in the quarry local to me, and I'm gonna focus only on buoyancy. 
So what's that gonna do for me? One, it's gonna force me to get the reps in. It's gonna force me to take steps that are actually gonna improve my buoyancy versus just trying to get it done in general. It's also gonna improve my log dives. So if I had a secondary goal of wanting more log dives for the year, I'm getting more dives logged because I'm spending plenty of time underwater on these dives. And let's say air consumption was another goal of mine. Well, it's also gonna help improve my air consumption because better buoyancy is one of the ways that you can improve your air consumption. And I'll have a whole video about improving air consumption and also improving your buoyancy linked up in the cards and down in the description below if you're interested in that sort of thing. But just for an example's sake, I wanted to go through that, you know, taking the actions of actually improving your buoyancy are how you're gonna affect the end state milestone that you're looking for versus just setting that milestone goal, but not really having any type of action plan as a goal for yourself to actually ensure that you get to that final mile marker that you're looking for. As another example, let's say that I wanted to work on propulsion as you know an overall goal. Like I just want to get better at being efficient in the water. Well, propulsion as a whole might be like kind of a nice milestone to have, but again, it's more of that milestone instead. Like I just want to be more efficient with my kicking, right? But if I get a little bit more specific about actions, like, hey, for the next three months, I want to focus on just back kicking or just back fitting. You know, that's reversing underwater basically, right? I want to learn how to reverse kick so I can swim backwards and I'm going to do that for the next uh, three months. 10 minutes at the end of every single dive. So, you know, as we're getting near the end, we're doing a safety stop and stuff, we're just gonna practice my back kicking and start swimming around. And that's what I did. I did that for 90 days, and I actually have a whole video that I'm gonna put up in the cards and link down below uh, about how I learned to back kick in 90 days, basically. But, you know, again, I only was able to do that and improve my propulsion, which is kind of the overall goal or milestone that I set for myself through the actual goal of the action of taking 90 days, 10 minutes at the end of every dive to go ahead and practice specifically just my back kicking or my back finning, whatever you want to call it. As a nice aside, this actually meant that it got me in the water more often because I had a specific goal that I wanted to keep to, to make sure that I'm spending that 10 minutes diving and, and doing that back kicking itself. So that did raise my total number of dives logged if that was a goal of mine that I cared about. Uh, and it also would give me more time in the water, which is probably going to help with buoyancy. It's going to help with uh, air consumption and just all the other benefits that come with more time in the water, right? So I'm kind of affecting multiple goals while focusing on just the actions to get me to kind of the one milestone that I was looking for. With this concept in mind of actions versus milestones, what are some of the actions you're planning to take this year to achieve your goals? It doesn't have to just be diving related, it can be life goals as well, but let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you wanna hit that subscribe button, I'd appreciate it. All right, so you're probably convinced that action-based goals are the way to go for when we set our goals for the new year or just setting goals in general, whether that's for diving or life goals. So, you know, whether it's something like improving air consumption or something like wanting to lose some weight for the summertime. but how do you actually connect diving with my life goals, right? You might be asking yourself this. Well, as promised, I actually think scuba diving can help you with these life goals, and here's how. I'll start by covering what I just said, actually, which is weight loss. So, you know, weight loss is a goal that a lot of us have. We all want to be fitter. We all want to be healthier, things like that, right? And scuba diving can actually help you lose weight. Let's say that our action-based goal is to work out more, just be more active, right? Well, scuba diving can actually burn, you know, 300 calories or more every hour, depending on a few different variables, like the temperature of the water, the, you know, gear that you're in and things like that. But I actually have a whole video, again, I'll leave up in the cards and link down below that talks about just weight loss for scuba diving and basically how you can lose weight by scuba diving just as an active activity that you're doing regularly. Another example is a lot of us, including me, uh, we want to be able to stress less, right? We want to get rid of that stress and de-stress. And maybe if we decide to take an action-based approach, we'll say something like, you know, I'm going to spend five minutes every morning and every night meditating instead, right? Meditate every morning, meditate every night. That should hopefully lead me to a more mindful uh, day and allow me to kind of, uh, you know, release some of that stress that I carry with me, right? Scuba diving can actually help with this as well. Now, it might be more than just, you know, five to 10 minutes a day, but if you think about it, when you're scuba diving, you are completely, you know, listening just to the bubbles around you basically and the sounds of underneath the water there. There's really little to no distraction going on and you're just enjoying the nature right in front of you. So I personally think that scuba diving is something that can greatly improve your mental health. It's something that's been documented as well. And I actually have a video that I probably need to make a new version of, but you know, an older video of mine where I talk about how scuba diving specifically improved my mental health tremendously and how it's one of the only ways that I can really, you know, find calm peacefulness that uh, I don't always find in life otherwise. And and I'll have that linked up in the cards and down in the description too. 
Now, what about experiences? A lot of people set goals around, you know, traveling more, spending more time with family, you know, having those shared experiences together, making new memories and things like that. And personally, I say, why not make this travel happen with a dive trip? So, you know, for example, my girlfriend and I just recently went to Curacao where, you know, we got to spend the entire week diving in the morning and then spending the afternoon on the resort, just kind of checking out the island and laying out on the beach and just having a great time there. So it can really be a full family experience for you and a significant other or you and your kids too. Your kids can scuba dive with you. They can go on a dive, uh, discover diving experience if they aren't certified yet, uh, depending on how old they are, of course, you know, or you guys can go snorkeling together or something like that. But a dive trip not only gets you to go out to, you know, maybe a new country, whether it's a Caribbean island or down in Mexico or something like that, you know, an area you haven't explored before, but it also gives you something to do on your vacation as a family, as a group together. Uh, and it really kind of lets you share that experience with everybody. So it's a way to kind of connect again, diving with these life goals of just having, you know, more experiences, more travel, things like that. Now, as a quick side note, if you are planning to do any type of dive travel at all, I actually have a free packing list that I use on all of my dive travel. You can get it at the link down below, but it's also at circlehscuba.com slash packing list. As you can see, there are a lot of ways that diving can help you with your New Year's resolutions and your life goals in general. And one of those ways is going to be to learn something new. Click or tap the screen now to check out my scuba diving skills playlist, where you can learn some new skills like knot tying, underwater navigation, hand signals, and things like that. With that, stay safe, have fun, learn something new this year, and let's go diving.